know on your tax bill is a separate tax on that library. So the library tax did increase, which is why our municipal tax rate went down just a bit, so that we could offset this cost. Um, so their tax levy changed to uh, 4000 and changed. Their, or their increase uh, was $26,988 for library tax. So our review year over year, I'm not going to go through all of it, but as you can see, um, we do have some increases here, our local municipal um, increases, our surplus is flat, we got a little more in the New Jersey State Aid, um, a little bit on the shared service, our UCC fees went down, library tax went up, other special items in our budget went down, um, and total revenues um, collectively were down. Our general appropriations and reserve are less taxes, so our total appropriations, we actually came down in the budget this year. So this is a huge credit to each one of our department and division heads working directly with the administration and with Brandon and I to ensure that we always are providing the best services for our, for our residents. Nothing was being cut. They all did and sat down and got almost, almost everything they asked for. Um, can't always give the moon and the stars. But they have, and so our municipal budget has gone down a little bit this year. Um, this is a little bit of a hard, I'm sorry, it's an eye chart, it's even an eye chart for me a little bit, but this this slide, and I think we have copies for people, this, this actually will break down exactly what <clears throat> our residential assessed value um, collectively in the borough is 655, uh, 283, 300 million. So the residential units we have are a little over 2,500. The assessed value, the average assessed value, and this is interesting um, given that we know that the housing market has skyrocketed, but we have kept our residential assessed value at 258,000. Um, so our tax rate is 1.019. So the average residential tax on that assessed property of 258,000 is $2,635.65. That's your municipal piece of it. So we actually have an, um, an annual decrease of $2.07. So our total estimated tax on a, on a property assessed for that amount that we spoke of, your total bill likely is somewhere around $9,300 um, a year. I think that's probably right. I think that's what my tax bill somewhat is like. Um, and that includes your school tax, um, where their tax rate is 2.034. Your residential county tax, which is um, 0.52. Our municipal tax, which is 1.019. Uh, the library tax, which is 0.049. So that is approximately $9,300 a, a year. So this is just our general appropriations when we, when we take a look at the budget. So our general operations is typically about 83% of our budget. We have statutory expenditures of about 8%. Our capital improvements are less than, um, or about 1% of that. Our debt service is about 6%. We do keep a reserve for uncollectible taxes. Um, that's if someone, for some reason, did not pay their taxes, we keep them in a, you know, a reserve. Uh, but we have been trending, I want to say somewhere 90, 98% of taxes are being collected in the borough. Um, so, our total appropriations in our budget is thirteen million five nine three nine ninety five and ninety eight cents. Our capital budget plan upcoming. We have a bunch of roads on the uh, docket to be completed. I believe some of the work has already started on um, those roads. So Janice Drive neighborhood, River Street neighborhood, American Way, West End, Cal, Lakeview, Walker. We have our office on aging senior bus. We approved that in our in our capital plan last year. They are still working on finding something that would be most appropriate for us. Um, I think a lot of people here would be excited to see the next one. Yay! <laughs> Ms. Charlesworth would let the courtroom microphone and speaker system is on our, our docket for this year. And we are repurposing some unused capital um, that we have to, to build into our into our, our current budget to allow for the police department to uh, purchase a car annually within their budget, as opposed to having to go to a capital plan or, or uh, appropriate funds for that separately. Or the mayor's car. So, anybody, well, I can't. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am.
anybody have any questions? One, two. One, two. Yeah, okay. A motion. I'm sorry. Go ahead. A motion open to the public uh, budget questions only. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. At this time, if anybody has any questions regarding the budget, please come forward. Uh, Chuck Hager, 65 Herman Drive. Um, I noticed in the area of revenue, um, there are two revenue areas that went up quite substantially from 23 to 24. And I understand you budgeted these amounts because of what was actually realized in 23. I'm just wondering what's going on in reference to, first of all, the fees and permits. Um, the budget last year was 380. We actually realized 435,000. Um, why did that go up? So specifically, Mr. Uh, Hager, last year the uh, borough anticipated $160,000 in uh, EMS fees, but we collected $302,000 in EMS fees last year. There was a change. Oh, that was there. my next question. Yeah, so the, the recommendation from the. Um, I'm not. Oh, you're on fees and permits. Right. Fees and so fees and permits, permits that would be. Um, Anything in regards to local fees, so not the construction fees or anything like that, that would be under a separate section. I have to pull the listing, but that's based off what we call it. Just when something goes up in collections, twenty percent. I'm just curious. It's quite a substantial. I can I can pull the specifics um, and then email them. I appreciate that. And then my next question was on the EMS um, revenue that went up um, almost one hundred percent. The hundred sixty thousand dollars that was. We changed uh, EMS uh, billing providers, um, and because of that, uh, it was a recommendation by the director. Um, we've been realizing more fees that we're collecting uh, better at, at, at collection rates. So I would I would attribute it to that. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> On the appropriation end of it, um, Department of Law, um, the. OE last year was 135,000. This year it's 250,000. I take it that's the ongoing litigation expenses. Um, some are covered by the insurance company and some are based off of what we're seeing uh, from last year's budgeting. Uh, we spent about 224,000 in last year's budget. Um, the state will not allow you to go under that amount unless you have a reasonable explanation. So you have to go. And then in Appropriations, um, recreation. Um, last year, uh, we expended um, eighteen thousand in, in salaries and wages. Uh, it's budgeted for thirty thousand this year. So there's a split of uh, one full, or one part-time employee that's fully dedicated there, and then half of an employee that oversees multiple departments, um, part of aging. Basically, the Department of Community Affairs. So the Director of Community Affairs, part of our staff, is there. I was. I'm sorry. Can I just? Can I jump in? I was under the impression that her budget came out of administration and not out of recreation. It does not. Okay. And then the OE for recreation has tripled from um, nineteen thousand charge to sixty-five thousand budgeted. There was a request from the department head. Director of Community Affairs to go cap seventy thousand, um, and then after we release the uh, we bump at sixty five thousand. The school folks can't hear you at home. So yeah. what? So what? What is being added? Program wise, predictable douchebag. I would have to pull the uh, 
the request from the uh, director. I don't have that with me, but there was a request by the director to increase those to have uh, more recreational activities in addition. <laughs> I had a couple of questions. Um, on sheet 9i, our grant income anticipated was down significantly from the prior year. We're not really listing much. Are we not seeking grants? Is there? No, so you, uh, Mr. O'Brien, when it comes to introducing the municipal budget, uh, you can only anticipate those items that you receive the grant award. Um, we yeah. have put in there actually, since introduction, we have gotten a number of items for the grant to be put in, mm -hmm. one being uh, the CDBG grant. You cannot add uh, grant items until the budget is adopted. That's the reason why the state has a chapter 159. Um, uh, it, basically what a chapter 159 is a resolution that would do a dedicated by rider to add an item to the budget. You can only add items to the grant section. So it, when you put in a grant, the state will ask you to provide the award uh, letter or the check. If you don't have it, then you can't have it in the budget. And they so, won't allow you to adopt the budget. Makes sense. So the last year and the year before when we did it, we did it incorrectly. Um, no, there was a few. Last year they didn't have any grants in there. The year before that there was maybe three or four. It all depends on when you receive the grant. So it's a matter of time. Yes. Okay. Thank you. On sheet 17 there's a salary adjustment of 50000 I was wondering what that was so that was budgeted last year, um, and what it, it does is it anticipates for a, um, a retirement of an employee, so you would end up paying uh, PTO time out of that uh, item, because if you do not have something dedicated within the budget, you have to then take it out of the uh, municipal or so it's departmental a, budget. It's a leave accrual? Yes. Okay. In the amendment that the council will, in, uh, that will entertain this evening, mm -hmm. uh, it did decrease down to 27000 but that is based off of a record state because they want us to split out a debt service payment. Okay, thank you. Um, I saw the slide about capital projects, but I didn't see anything specific listed in sheets 48 through 40D. So in the amendment, you will see uh, some items to the water and sewer fund that was in our Q, uh, QAA or WQAA report to the state. Um, however, we're not uh, anticipating any new debt this year. We're going to repurpose debt that was already prior, uh, prior year approved. That's the reason why you don't see anything on there. So there is no new debt expected for this year, and that's what that, those slides are for. But I noticed in the past we would still list the projects in an estimate. You, you can, and that's in future projects. I do not know what a future project would be. Um, the administration uh, concludes at the end of the year, and then, uh, then you can then put in a new amount. I, I can't predetermine what sure, you're not anticipating what you don't know yet. Okay, and Mr. Hager talked about the 150% increase in our legal expenses, so I'll leave that alone. I happened to take a look at the last budget of the previous administration, Mayor Steelers, back in 2020, and, and essentially I noticed that the, the difference in miscellaneous revenue from 20 to 24 mm -hmm. is $2.2 .2 million, which essentially is the developer's contribution and the pilot payment, which the mayor spoke of a few minutes ago. So I guess my question is, looking at next year's budget, how are we going to plug that gap if there's no longer a developer contribution coming from the state? Um, or is it, what, so what you what you have there's about an additional uh, five hundred thousand give or take that would uh, happen when you collect the full pilot payment right. um, from the developer um, that would then be built in. Um, one of the items that I have discussed with council members is that since losing the Helmeta policing contract, right. um, my understanding from looking at how that trended when you had the Helmeta contract that covered a, per a percentage, it actually covered for four police officers to be um, uh, added to the force, so one to each squad. Um, in this uh, budget, the past two years, you've kept those uh, people on even though you didn't have the revenue from Helmeta. The 500. So there's there's about it would be about four hundred and ninety thousand dollars to cover um, the the lowest four members of the police department uh, from a salary perspective, um, and that would be something that uh, the next council and mayor would have to look at. But the gap for the developers pilot would be an additional. Five. I'm not 
Sorry, that's a pilot thing. I meant the contribution. The three and a half million dollars they agreed to give us towards recreational purposes. We're running out of that money, correct? Yes. So part of keeping the budget flat this year, last year, and the year before was built on that foundation. I didn't create the last two okay. budgets. I only did okay. okay, so this budget. In this certainly part. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ronco, can I just ask you to please put the sign away? <coughs> First Amendment. I, I understand it's First Amendment. There you go. That's it. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Ed Sealy, AA Elm Street, Spots, New Jersey. So, is that the question? Has the state approved the budget yet? So, George Allen is our um, reviewer. There were two items that he asked for an amendment on. One was uh, the NJEIT loan. Um, we have a weird schedule. That's the reason why you had an emergency last year of $59,000 to pay that debt service payment. It's always been funded on one line. Um, they now want it to be separated out the principal line and an interest line. When you change a you line can't more see. than, I want to say, a percentage, clearly this went from zero to 26000 it, It's more than a percentage. Requires an amendment to the budget. Um, that is explained in the amendment resolution. Um, we were approved to move forward with uh, doing the hearing this evening for the original budget, approved to move forward for the, uh, the amendment to go forward, and then uh, for adoption at our next meeting. So there's no other thing pending that may hold up the budget? From the email that I got from him today is that we are clear, I mean, I can read it to you, but they are clear to move forward. Just a direct question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, you may. You can proceed to pass the resolution to amend tonight. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Yeah. Any council members have any questions? I if we were to decide to amend the budget between now and the vote, we have to go back to the state? We would need to alert the state, yes. <laughs> and that would trigger a complete new review. So we would have to then go back and whatever we decide to change, then they would have to do another review on the budget. But if they've already reviewed it once, it would just be what we would be asking them to review? No, they, they would do a complete review. That's that's a requirement for, for them. So that's usually, when you introduce your budget, that's why they have a statutory requirement for a month to go by before you have your adoption hearing. <coughs> you typically need to let the state know within two weeks of introduction if you're going to change anything. Um, and then in the last two weeks, it's usually whatever changes that the state requires you to do with your budget. But we still have the option to do it. We would just have to put it under review again. Uh, yes, I mean, I would need to know probably within looking at the holiday um, and then looking at you know, June would be after. So looking at the holiday, just not a pop-up Uh, I have a real concern about the pilot uh, monies kind of filling in on the budget line. That's going to run out, as Mr. O'Brien has stated. So, in essence, unless something's really done, we're in the negative. I, I would I would say that the two percent increase on the million dollars over the next couple of, of thirty years, yeah. the two per, two percent increase is a, is a pretty hefty amount of money. So the concern and what we had to make up for over these past two budget years and utilize that funding was the loss because if we remember last year when we talked about the inside and outside that when we had a shared service with Palmetto that was paying $700,000 right, um, outside, we were able to be outside the cap on salary, on some of the salary in the budget. Unfortunately, when you don't have someone else paying for that any longer, and we brought that in, and it was this administration's decision not to, you know, cut any any positions or, or do anything, and I, I believe council would have agreed with us on that, that we really wanted to keep, you know, our staffing in-house, we now had to push that to inside the cap. And unfortunately,
unfortunately, we don't get the tax break, I'll say, of it being inside the town. So we've absorbed the, the cost of eliminating the Helmetta contract, which was bringing in a significant re revenue and allowing us to put salaries outside the town because it was someone else paying it. Does that make sense? I understand completely. Yeah. But with the increase of fuel, the increase of insurance, with the increase, and just go down the list, we are in the negative. And I understand it's gonna be a tough hole to fill. I respect that. And the other essence with the 3.5, the one payment, the one-time payment, where is that money? Is there an account? Do we have access to see that actual number? And following up on that with the 3.5, what is it? What is it gonna be used or was it gonna be used for? So that revenue payment came in last year. We received the payment. We received yes. the payment last year. We did hold it. Um, we did use to balance some of our budget last year. Again, we made the decision that utilizing that funding was more important because there was so much discussion and talk about the recreational facility that we were going to use for it. We made the decision to, to flatten our taxes, to keep the taxes flat, to give it back to the residents, to say this is something that we're going to use. Yes, we appreciate the help, we appreciate the money, but that is a, that has essentially we've been able to utilize that funding in order to again everything skyrocketing um, and the cost and and in, in in the administration's opinion, it's more important. And I think we've heard it many times, it's more important for us to, to really take care of our taxpayers and keep our costs as tight as we possibly can. So we have used that, that funding to ensure that, this, that it is not affecting our taxpayers. And we don't have to utilize um, additional funding. And you know, again, it's the administration's job. We brought in you know, the, the lease agreement payments. We haven't had that before. Right? And so as they, they were starting to trickle in, but this is the first, I think, budget year that we are recognizing that amount, um, full amount. Because again, we can't recognize revenue that we didn't have. Um, you know, again, EMS has done a very good job of us being able to bill um, for what we were what we were not, or had not been billing for prior. But, you know, was it, it was the administration's decision, really, to think about what was best for the community and the taxpayers in, in keeping their their taxes as low as we can, knowing that other entities that, that fall into our tax bill do go up. So that's that's what we, I mean, that's, the, that's the truth of it. I understand, and it's almost gone, and I go back to, it's gonna be tough, but I respect that, and thank you for all your hard work and uh, focus on that. Um, would we be able to get a quarterly report on that account at all of what's left? Of how much is left? Or any such as? Just asking. It's at zero after this, is it not? 23 was like 1.9 million. 24 That's it. Be, so, five. go back to my first statement. I understand. Thank you for the explanation. Any other questions? Sorry, it just, it just jumps in my head. I really don't like making it to me large. Yeah. <laughs> just one question. Just a scenario. If 85 Main Street folds up, files suit, decides they can't do it, what happens then? So I mean, it's not guaranteed yeah, money if they decide yeah, to go yeah, bankrupt. Yeah, I doubt that would happen, but I'm just saying it's a scenario. The pilot is a 30 year. Pilot. They so can't, they can't, they can't, pilot. They can't appeal. You can't appeal it. You can't appeal a pilot. You can appeal the land tax. You cannot appeal the pilot. The pilot is locked in for 30 years. Right. So if you file bankruptcy, you gotta pay it. I'm just saying. That was like that, that that's not something that we deal with as bankruptcy, but under state law, a 30 year pilot must be paid. It cannot be appealed. Right. They can appeal right. their land tax. I understand this is a important concern, and that's just you know, we all like to believe that nothing's going to go wrong, but if it does, then we're prepared. Well, that's why you should build up your, your fund balance. So that's why this year the fund balance was built up by an additional 200,000 to leave, and you kept only using 500,000 within the fund balance. Prior years, you were using more. The last two years, you, you kept it flat at 500,000. Um, you don't have appropriation 
reserves over expenditures within this year's budget. Um, there was one item that was found in the audit from the 2022 budget that had to be budgeted within this year. Um, the $59,000 of an emergency, you will not have, I mean, you're not anticipating any emergencies. Um, so that would be something. So there's, you can look at several items and I can give a breakdown to council for future years. Typically I do do a two year look ahead um, if I'm asked, but I have never been asked to do that here. Thank you. Thank you. Make a motion to close the public portion. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 At this time, we have two ordinances uh, for second reading. Okay. Ordinance 2024-4, an ordinance amending and supplementing part two general legislation slash land development, chapter 120, land development, article 500, stormwater control, repair and zone, and steep slopes to incorporate rules preventing stored salt and other solid de-icing materials from being exposed to stormwater in the borough of Spotswood, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey. Ordinance 2024-5, an ordinance amending and supplementing part two, general legislation slash land development, <clears throat> chapter 120, land development, article 500, stormwater control, repairing zones, and steep slopes to incorporate rules to address tree removal and replacement. We also have three ordinances on second reading, I'm sorry, on first reading, public hearing set for Monday, June 17th, 2024. Ordinance 2024-6, an ordinance amending and supplementing the salary ordinance of the borough of Spotswood entitled an amendment to the ordinance fixing and establishing salaries and wages of certain non-bargaining unit employees of the borough of Spotswood, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey. 2024-7, Ordinance of the Borough of Spotswood, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, establishing a policy for property tax exemption on dwelling house of 100% totally disabled veteran or surviving spouse. Ordinance 2024-8, an ordinance of the Borough of Spotswood, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the borough clerk to place upon the November 5th, 2024 general election ballot, a question asking voters whether or not they wish to establish a charter commission to study and possibly recommend changes to the borough's form of government. We also have resolutions under consent agenda, resolutions 2024-74 through 2024-79, 2024-74 resolution authorizing the execution of an amended interlocal agreement with the Township of South Brunswick to provide the lease of mobile data computer units and info cop licenses. 2024-75, a resolution authorizing a refund of $1,939.18 to Ken Gorman for his duplicate reimbursement of overpayment of wages. 2024-76, a resolution authorizing a tax refund. 2024-77, Resolution authorizing the execution of an amended contract with the East Brunswick Animal Hospital. 2024-78, resolution authorizing the execution of a contract with the borough of Spotswood School Crossing Guards, including the changes which have been negotiated and agreed upon for the years January 1, 2024 through December 31st, 2027, and 2024-79, payment of bills. We will also I'd like to make a motion. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Oh, it does. Yeah, okay. We also have the 2024 municipal budget hearing amendment and no, this is not an adoption. Um, and that's 2024 80 resolution amending the 2024 budget of the borough of Spotswood, County of Middlesex. Mr. Uh, Council President, yes. the change to the East Brunswick Animal Hospital was due to, I, I guess, a miscommunication by then, even though we had an email stating the new numbers. So it's a $10 increase for both spay and neutering, um, and they will not microchip, they will remain ear chip. So from what I reported at the last meeting, it's a $10 increase. Um, I think it's $110 now for male cats and $160 for female cats. Um, that was a requirement that they would sign for the contract until we added the $10 increase. Um, and then they wanted a clarification that ear tipping is all they will do, not my Okay. Thank you for the explanation. Mm -hmm. oh. That once we then approve this, that they'll finally sign. But it's been kind of difficult. Really. 
Council President, can I use the caucus to talk on a couple items? Sure. Okay, so uh, just to get my reasoning out of the way in the caucus, we have an ordinance tonight, 2024-6, the salary ordinance, and I need to follow up with a couple people on here. I requested several changes weeks ago. Uh, Brandon, thank you for answering your component of it. And I know some colleagues also have concerns that were only presented over the weekend that took priority over mine. So let's all table them together, perhaps in the uh, regular. And then an item from the resolutions list is the payment of bills. I was away this weekend, which you'll hear about later in the night. And then my today my sister got back from her honeymoon and there were gifts and I had to give some attention to that. So I couldn't get in to look at the bills. So as I'm prepared, I'm prepared for that, I'm wondering if a similar courtesy is gonna be extended to me to table it or if I should abstain. Okay. Bills? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, very, very good. Okay, I was just double checking that. Yep, that's fine. I'm gonna have to have the same. Because I know a uh, resident who uh, likes us to look at each bill, and I didn't get to do that uh, this weekend. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to open to the public to speak about anything that is on the list here regarding the ordinances or the resolutions. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The public comment portion of the Spotswood Borough Council meeting is to allow the public to bring to council's attention their concerns or comments in accordance with NJSA-10-4-12A as well as Spotswood Borough Ordinances 2-18 and 2-19, except upon consent of the council president each person addressing the council in the case of a resolution shall limit their remarks to three minutes, and in the case of an ordinance shall limit their remarks to five minutes total for the meeting. No person shall direct any remarks or questions to any specific council member except by permission of the council president. Any council member through the council president may choose to answer a question, but they are not obligated to do so. All persons wishing to address the council shall do so from the podium or other location specified by the council president. Each person addressing the council must identify themselves by name and address. If said person is representing a business or organization, they shall further state whether their comments are their personal view or those of the group they represent. Thank you. Diane Charles with 29 North Stage Road. As usual, I have some questions on the bill list. Um, on the second page, down towards the bottom, there's RFP Solutions, Professional Services Rendered. What did they do for us? Which one is that? I'm sorry. Excuse me? What number is that? I'm sorry. Um, 2400614. It's towards the bottom. It's for $8,601, I think. $8,661. You just got new glasses, too. God. I just have a lot of glasses. Nobody knows what they did for us? I'm, I'm working on it. Oh, okay. Off. When you go from upstairs to downstairs, you lose it. Yeah. Okay. How about another one while we're waiting? <laughs> on page three, again towards the bottom, uh, 240652, statewide insurance fund, a deductible for claim number whatever for 25000 plus. Who was that for? It was a request for deductible for the Johnson, Johnson. John, for the, uh, Johnson lawsuit. For Brittany? Yes. So just the um, RFP guy. Okay. This is a buildings and grounds. Oh, you, you <coughs> um, 
it is an emergency install of two Cat 6 cables, uh, to the municipal building and trailer, extending data, one cable. Tim, do you have any other uh, information on it? It was for when they had the trailer out there to bring some of the data out for the temporary police communications. So we never paid. Yeah. Yeah. So it was an old bill from when they had the trailer after the show. Yeah, there's an option been paid. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep, because the invoice date was 9 13 of 22. Wow. Holy man. That's why I didn't know about it. Sorry, Mr. Good evening, everyone. Ben Ritchie, Good evening. There's two places that um, Bruno Associates shows up. One for 1265, and the other one's for 600 something. What are they for? for uh, they are our grant or administrator. They administer the, the grant programs, so they, they apply for various grants for the town. Okay, thank you. Can I, can I jump on that for a sec? Sure. Can you tell me how many grants that Bruno Associates has recommended that we apply for up until this point? Is that you've done? Off the top of my head, I don't, but I can pull that. Thing. I, I know I gave a. I think they do a report in each of them. Yeah, and then I, I, I like because I didn't have time to look at it. Yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't get to see it either, so I don't know if it's on the invoice, but. I'd like to, I would like to have a report as to how many grants Bruno is actually recommending that we apply for and whether we have or have not done so. They, they, they send us every grant. Uh, right. <laughs> right. That's what we pay them for. Yeah, off the You're top, on the list. Yeah, off the top of my head, the two that we most recently finished was the AFG grants that both the fire and EMS put in. Okay. Um, I know that was two items that we were working on for the last several months. So and that I, came from Bruno? I would assume, yes, they, they provided the recommendation. I sent it out to the department heads, and then the department heads came back with uh, with their recommendations, and then they went forward with what they were looking to uh, require. The PO should probably tell you exactly what the specifics was, because I only have in here uh, professional services rendered. Uh, top of the second page, ASCAP. That's typically the music licensing fee. Why would we be paying that? So I did inquire to this. This is now um, uh, probably three years worth of fees uh, that have built up. Um, it landed on my guess from finance saying, what, what is this? I inquired to the company. Anytime that you have um, uh, the tree lighting, you have the any type of recorded messaging, you have to pay for uh, the licensing of those musics to, to be played at your, at your municipal mm -hmm. building. You also need to pay for any on hold music or things like that. So I got a, a full explanation, um, and we have utilized the license in order to play music at our events to the Okay, thank you. Um, the New York County DA. So this is an item that was approved last August. I don't know why it didn't happen until now. Um, we were double, uh, one, double bill, no. We double bill for the same service when we're using uh, one of our officers who was on loan to the DEA. They then sent back the check, um, paying us, we deposited it, and then uh, finance said we didn't receive the check. They sent us another check. We deposited it, so then we had to go pay. This uh, was approved in the August meeting um, to pay them back. I don't know why it has made it until now that the check never paid, but that that is what went out um, to them as per that resolution last year. Yeah. And this covers all the time of the officer. The time it was a double payment. Yeah. So the the we. When the officers are on loan to the department yes. covers part of their expenses. Yes. Okay. And then finally, if my math is correct, I have 100, 100,519 in legal fees on the bill this month, excluding planning and zoning and bond council. $100,519. One month. How about a break?
breakdown of some of this. I believe there's multiple ones in there, but I would have to go back to the system and, and then provide the uh, breakdown. Well, the first ones would be yeah. borough council, uh, or at least for this year or last year? This year. This year? This year? Matthew Sage for 2000. He is the public defender. Okay, so we're down to 98,000. Uh, Raynon Coglin? Is that labor council. Because of lawsuits that are going on, is that what they're looking into? Or are they doing labor, any labor attorney? They're doing labor matters. They're doing labor matters right now. Okay. Anything that's uh, been handled by a lawsuit was then turned over to the insurance company. The insurance company assigns the attorney for them. Bob Smith and Associates? He is the prosecutor. Okay. Yeah. You know, if there's a way for you guys to put in something on these that explains it, Robert Smith and Associates, municipal prosecutor, you know, and UNPROS, something that would kind of explain it where people would look at it and go, oh, okay. And that would probably be a good thing to do. That's why I'm doing it. On the, is the salary order table? Or is it going to continue on today? To be determined. So looking at the salary ordinances, everything in red, is that where all the changes lie? No, that is the changes that cause the agreement to come. <clears throat> Only the ones in red? Yes. Okay. So um, I provided to council. There was uh, actually uh, Councilman Ritchie, you were on council at the time. Um, Ordinance 2021-11, which restructured the Department of Community uh, Services. Um, this ordinance was never codified into the municipal code book. So I had no clue that it was ever passed. Obviously, I wasn't here in 2021. Um, it reshaped uh, department titles, um, and I believe that the question came up at the last meeting about various directors. Well, in one department, you can't have various directors. You have the one director and then people underneath that person. Um, and then people were asking questions, well, why is somebody listed as a coordinator, but they're listed in the salary ordinance as a director? This was all mandated to be changed by the passing of Ordinance 2021-11, but it never made it to the salary ordinance. So after reviewing that with the clerk and getting that, that's when I sent an email explaining it to council saying this I was unaware of and this is my recommended changes and that you should table the first reading of the, of the salary ordinance and move forward with a restructure of the salary ordinance to match ordinances that are already on the books and, top, and should have been codified. Okay, so no one's, no one's lost a position where we've gone from the director of recreation to now part-time coordinator. It's the same job. Just it's a recreation coordinator, not a director of recreation. All right, thank you. Good evening, Colleen Ronto, I'm an author. Um, the $25,000 payment from the GIF is deductible. Does that mean that we settled the Johnson lawsuit? The race. That's the only thing I'm going to be New Jersey. Just going back to Mr. Marshall's question about the claim for settlement. You pay a settlement, doesn't that mean it's float? It's not a settlement, it's a deductible. It's a deductible payment. It's a deductible for your share of the settlement. No. 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 There's no settlement. Your, your okay. fees. Do you know something I don't know? Sometimes. <laughs> okay, we'll put that aside for a second. I have a bigger concern. I need you to explain to me this ordinance with the 100% disability for best what's going on with that. As a veteran myself, as a guy who's been exposed to light water, as a naval firefighter, what's the problem? Why are we establishing the policy? So, uh, Mr. Taylor, we just actually. Um, got an explanation about how this works tonight. Um, so I believe we're going to make a motion to table it so that we can review it a little bit further uh, prior to a vote. Appreciate that, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, 
Chuck Hager, 65 Herman Drive. Uh, question on resolution 2024-78. Um, when I went online, I, I saw the resolution itself. Um, I didn't see a copy of the contract or the changes that were occurring in the contract. And I'm just wondering, what were the changes in the contract? You're talking about the animal uh, hospital? No. no. Was it crossing the crossing guard? Guard? The crossing board contract. There is an increase to their their clothing allowance went from 525 up to 550. Um, there was discrepancies within um, one section said if they go to a um, a school event that it's not a mandatory two hours, but then in another item if the chief orders them to go to court or something along those lines, that is a mandatory two hours. So we set everything other than them being out on the street and being a crossing guard to be a mandatory two hours. Okay. Um, and then some cleanup items, those are the, the main highlights to the, uh, to the changes. Thank you. I've got a question that the public is going. Sure. Uh, we are tearing these ordinances apart, I'm sorry. Ordinance, ordinance 2024-8, for the folks at home or in the crowd, if council authorizes this, there will be a additional seats for election in November, where five people will study if we change the form of government in Spotswood, which is well and fine. However, my concern is why don't we have the residents get the signatures, the 20% of the voting population, which is very doable Much and it's permitted by law? I thought, I thought we were doing that, we're not doing that. That if we pass on second reading, it will be on the ballot and the signatures are not needed. For them to run. For, it to, for the question to be on the ballot to begin with. <laughs> They need to get so, the, the individuals need to get their own signatures right. later in the summer if council authorizes it. Right. But you're asking it's ten percent, it's it's not it's 20. twenty. It's twenty. I was under the impression it was ten. Is it twenty? So we I had asked to see that at the last meeting, that I would be interested in seeing a twenty percent as well. The signature? I did. Because it's a it is a big deal. You know what I mean? And people need to get their steps in. You got you got the parade, you got Fourth of July, that you could be gathering these signatures. That's my thought. One of the things is the council authorizes this ordinance to go through. It puts the question up on the ballot for everyone. It does relieve us of trying to get 20% of the signatures, which I believe is about 230, 240 signatures which really won't take long at all. But it shows that the council is behind looking into this to see if we can't do something better than we have now. Mm -hmm. The people that run for election, at, or the people that will look to become uh, part of this committee, minimum of five people have to run. And my understanding, 
Jenny might be able to tell me if I'm wrong. It's going to be basically the same thing as when you run for another seat in town. You have to get petitions, you have to get signatures. There is a formula for how many signatures are required for the people that are going to run. I just don't recall what that formula is right now, whether it's 10 votes, 50 votes, or 50 signatures. But any of the five or more people can run. In the end, when you vote for this, you can vote for it, against it, or not vote for it at all. But you would ask, even if you didn't vote for this, you would still ask for them to select five people on the list. So I, per, you know, personally, I believe the council should back this. I think it's a good thing to do to look at it. Who's to say that anything's going to change? Right. But it's a review. It's an open discussion. It's held publicly. And I don't see where any of this would be a, de a detriment to anyone. My two cents. I have a question. Sure. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I'd like to go back to Bruno Associates. So I'm looking at these two purchase orders, and in each purchase order, Bruno Associates has suggested between 22 and 24 grants. On the average, how many do you tend to follow up with? So we're paying Bruno Associates to suggest approximately 20 to 30 grants each time we pay them. Out of those 20 to 30 suggestions, how many does administration actually follow through and say, yes, we want to apply for this? Well, it also depends. So they do make recommendations on the senior grants. We don't go through Bruno and Associates. We do it on our own. Why pay them? Right, Miriam is great when it comes so, to grants. I'm talking then, about. Them. And then when uh, they recommended three or four DOT grants, those DOT grants are then similarly recommended by the engineer. Um, I would have to go through the item, but it's typically then passed on to the department head um, because most of the grants are specific to a department. And then if the department head wishes to put in for it, then they put in for it. If they don't put in for it, then they don't. If it comes to like an administrative item, so one was the lantern block. So then we. I put together that because there was nobody here nor the department that put in for, for that. I, again, off the top of my head, I can't give you an answer because I don't have paperwork in front of me of all the different items that they've done. And, and some of the grants, um, Councilwoman, that they do send to us and um, Councilman uh, Lesko sees it as well, they're, they don't apply to us. Like, they're, like they do send us some things that don't necessarily apply. Um, we just got we just got a grant to help fund for an SRO in schools. We don't provide an SRO. In schools. Okay, and some of these grants that are recommended are listed twice. So they're listed on one purchase order for one bill, and then they're listed again on another purchase order for another bill. So they're billing us twice for their recommendations. And I don't have a piece of paper in front of me, and if you want to send that to me, but that's. Okay. I, I, think, um, I might be reading it wrong, but I'm looking at this purchase order for 605, and I'm looking at this purchase order for 1,200, and the same grants are listed on both pages as recommended, which is basically what we pay them for, correct? Then to well, find that, those grants well, for us? Be, it's, you're not paying them to find the grant. They're also working on They're the working application on. With, the, with the department. Okay. So they gather the information. So like with the AFG grant, the fire chief had to give um, calls for service, various other items, that's then compiled in the narrative and those things are done by the actual grant coordinator at Bruno instead of the police or the fire chief being asked to do it. Okay. Okay. Um, Councilman Lesko, you had a I was going to give you my February report so we can save some paper, but yeah. They're, they're, Let's can, distribute can we, these. Tomorrow. Yeah, I would just ask you to look at those again because both purchase orders have the same list of grants. They're actually like the same grant report. So I'm, I'm, I'm just curious as to where the difference would be. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not even voting, I'm complicating it. I'm going to 
no, Bill, I don't think you're complicating it at all. I think you're, you're making a point. Yeah, I would have to sit down and look at this further. I would, I would probably vote for the bill list and abstain from the Bruno bills, is what I'm thinking about doing at this point. <laughs> if we don't pay them this month, what's going to happen? Upon, I don't, I don't believe you get a penalty, but. Upon review, that's right, that's a fair, right? Okay, I'm gonna suggest we call the Bruno list. That's my suggestion, because to give time, ample spare time to review a finding. And if okay. there is, it sounds to me that there are two things going on here. One, we need to find some future cuts, right, and concerns here. And there's concern. So um, that's one. And two, you know, are we getting enough from the grants as we're paying this company, or is it a wash? Which do we really need this company besides coordination? That's all I'm saying. Probably. Oh. So I don't think the company can no, no, decide by council and then have a conversation. So we'll pull the bill and I'm going to make a motion to pull two purchase orders off of the bill resolution at this time, 24-00489 and 24-00631, which are the two Bruno Associate bills. So I'm making a motion to pull those two bills off the bill list. When that time comes, I'll second. I just did it. I second. <laughs> oh, we need to close the public first. Make a motion to close the public. Second. All right, somebody's up public. iPhone one, can you please unmute? There we go. <laughs> All right, guys, it's uh, Chief Draco from the fire department. I just wanted to set some light on you guys to help Brandon out here with uh, regards to Bruno. So we dealt with them for the ASG. The grant that we applied for is somewhere in the ballpark of $180,000, $200,000 if we're awarded it. It has, I forget the actual percentage that comes out of it and all as far as a town share, um, but the grant process for the AFG is extremely um, competitive and extremely lengthy and process, a, a crazy process to go through and all to apply for it. There's a lot of information, a lot of structure. The forms are very particular to even be competitive towards it. So I would say if, if what I'm assuming from what's there, I would assume that the process or the uh, bills aren't just for grant finding. I can tell you that I had to work with this individual for multiple hours um, across the time. So I would assume it was for services rendered. And basically, aside from information that we have to provide them, they completely handle filling out and processing the grant request through the, uh, through FEMA. Um, and like I said, it's extremely complicated. It would be extremely hard for myself or anybody who doesn't do this as, as a full-time thing to apply for. And like I said, as far as what it goes, us on our equipment side, we're talking, we have multiple capital issues to take care of in this town um, in hundreds of thousands of dollars. So grant services are something that is extremely worth it. Thank you. Okay, the council, my name is Jonathan Dickens. I'm a resident in town. I'm also a police officer and a member of 225. I'm here to speak on my own today. Um, I've been thinking this whole time of what I'm going to say, and there's just so much. I just want to make sure that this is, is this about either the ordinances or the, or the resolutions? Otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll open to the public for everything. In oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought that this was yeah. the public. Yeah, like in, in, in the, in the, oh, in the regular problem. meeting, which will be in a few minutes. Oh, my apologies. No problem. My apologies. Thank you. Okay, make a motion to close to the public. Second. Motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, this meeting was called for Monday, May 20th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. 
at Borough Hall, located at 77 Summit Hill Road, Spotswood, New Jersey, pursuant to the provisions of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 104-8B. The public may choose to attend this meeting electronically via Google Meet. This meeting was advertised on the Spotswood website and in the Home News Tribune. Councilman Kramer? Here. Councilman Lesko? Here. Councilwoman Schwartz? Here. Councilman Zavorny? Here. Council President Legakis? Here. Mayor Palmer? Here. This time I ask everybody to please rise and salute the flag. Two ordinances uh, for second reading. Um, I will take a motion to adopt ordinance 2024-4. I can make a motion to adopt ordinance 24-4. Second. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Councilman Lasko? Yes. Councilwoman Schwartz? Yes. Councilman Zborny? Yes. And Council President Legakis? Yes. Uh, I will take a motion to adopt ordinance 2024-5 on second reading. Make a motion to adopt ordinance 24-5. Second it. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Councilman Lasko? Yes. Councilwoman Schwartz? Yes. Councilman Zborny? Yes. Council President Legakis? Yes. Next we have, um, I'll take a motion to adopt Ordinance 2024-6 on first reading. Oh, introduce, I'm sorry. I'd like to make a motion to table ordinance 24-6. Second. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Councilman Lesko? Yes. Councilwoman Schwartz? Yes. Councilman Zavorny? Yes. And Council President Legatis? Yes. Uh, next, I will take a motion to um, introduce Ordinance 2024-7 on first reading, public hearing set for May uh, for June 17th. I'd like to make a motion to table 24 2024-7. Second. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Councilman Lesko? Yes. Councilwoman Schwartz? Yes. Councilman Zaborny? Yes. Council President Legakis? Yes. Next, I will take a motion to introduce Ordinance 2024-8 on first reading, public hearing set for June 17th, 2024. I'd like to make a motion um, to introduce Ordinance 24-8 on first reading. Second it. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Councilman Lesko? Yes, only for the reason to get discussion on it next month, where I will not be going for it then. So yes, tonight to advance. Councilwoman Schwartz? Yes. Councilman Zaborny? Yes. Council President Legakis? Yes. Okay, next I will, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, take a motion to adopt resolutions 2024-74 um, through 2024-79. Make a motion to adopt 2024-74 through 2024-79. Second it. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Councilman Lesko? Yes. Please mark me as an abstention for 79 in the bill. Councilwoman Schwartz? Yes. Councilman Zaborny? Yes, but on the payment of bills on the, and forgive me on the numbers for what we just discussed, yeah, Bruno, Bruno um, and let me reason in just further explanation and discovery, if I may use that term, not for any personal reason, just so, and I don't know the number of there, I apologize. So do you want, you want to abstain from those? We pulled them out of order. I didn't, no, we didn't vote on it. I never, I never went through. After listening to the chief, I'm fine for it. Okay. So you're, you're, Excuse me, you're fine? You're, yeah, I, after hearing from the chief, 
I'm, I'm good for this one. Okay. I would just vote support, so I'll say yeah, yes yeah. to everything. Thank you. And Council President Legatis. Yes. Uh, next, I will take a motion uh, to uh, adopt resolution 2024-80, which is a resolution amending the 2024 budget of the borough of Spotsylvania County and Middlesex. Make a motion to pass 2024-80. Second. Councilman Kramer? Yes. Councilman Lesko? Yes. Councilwoman Schwartz? Yes. Councilman Zorni? Yes. And Council President Legat? Yes. So specifically that now calls for a hearing on the amendment at our next meeting on the 17th, <coughs> the budget is not adopted. This is correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, we have three proclamations uh, for tonight. Uh, the first one uh, is a proclamation celebrating the 55th annual Municipal Clerks Week. Councilman Zorni? Whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk is the oldest among public servants, and whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk provides a professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at other levels, and whereas municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of the neutrality and partiality, rendering equal service to all. Whereas the municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community. Whereas municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the office of the municipal clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, pro provincial, county, and international professional organizations. Whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the office of the municipal clerk. Now, therefore, the Borough of Spotswood Council, on behalf of the Mayor and all the citizens of Spotswood, do recognize the week of May 5th through May 11th, 2024, as Municipal Clerks Week, and further extend appreciation to our acting Municipal Clerk, Jenny Service, and to all professional Municipal Clerks for their vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. Okay, next we have a proclamation celebrating National Police Week. All right. Whereas National Police Week in America was created to honor and recognize the sacrifice and contributions made by police officers in communities both large and small. And whereas the National Police Week held every year in May was created in 1962 through a proclamation issued by then President John F. Kennedy. And whereas our community will always appreciate and commend the risk officers take every day to ensure our community's laws are properly enforced and that public safety is ensured. And whereas now more than ever, the community also appreciates and encourages the community involvement facilitated by our police officers to both better serve and instill mutual trust, camaraderie, and positive relationship among our residents of the borough of Spotswood. And whereas police engage with and serve the public in the most varied and wide ranging manner and their efforts do not go unnoticed. And whereas the borough of Spotswood honors the valor, service and dedication of all police officers and publicly salutes the service of each and every one of our Spotswood police officers. Now therefore be it proclaimed the borough of Spotswood Council on behalf of the mayor and all of the citizens of Spotswood, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the weeks, the week does hereby proclaim the week, put in there twice, of May 12th through May 18th, 2024, as National Police Week in the borough of Spotswood and encourages all residents to join the borough in the recognition of the services, sacrifices, and the efforts of the Spotswood Police Department makes to best serve the community. And Thank I you. salute you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we have one more proclamation celebrating the 50th anniversary of EMS Week. And I will ask Councilwoman Schwartz to please read it. 
Whereas in 1974, President Gerald Ford authorized Emergency Medical Services Week to celebrate EMS, its practitioners, and the important work they do in responding to medical emergencies. At the time, EMS was, was a fledging profession and EMS practitioners were only beginning to be recognized as a critical component of emergency medicine and the public health safety net. And whereas emergency medical services are a vital public service, and whereas the members of emergency medical service teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury. And whereas the members of the emergency medical services teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of the emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week. Now therefore be it resolved that the Borough of Spotswood Council on behalf of the Mayor and all of the citizens of Spotswood in recognition of this event to hereby proclaim the week of May 19th through the 25th, 2024 as Emergency Medical Services Week and extend appreciation to all of the borough emergency medical technicians together with EMS Director Doug Service for their conscientious emergency medical services to the residents of the borough of Spotswood and mutual aid to residents of our neighboring towns. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask each council member if they have any uh, reports. Uh, we'll start with Councilwoman Schwartz. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, the library board has decided to change their meeting dates from the third Thursday of each month to the second Thursday of each month. The meetings for the rest of the year will be as follows, June 13th, July 11th, August 8th, September 12th, October 10th, November 14th, and December 12th, all starting at 7 p.m. The new circulation desk is installed and it is beautiful, so if you haven't seen it, please stop by the library and check it out. It's getting a ton of compliments. Um, and I don't even know how to go about this, but the LMXAC Consortia is getting a new ILS and a catalog, which will impact services consortia-wide until June 13th. So basically what this means is from June 4th to June 13th, the only thing that the libraries will be able to do is check items out and all delivery will be halted. And that also means checking out in between different libraries will also be halted while they redo their system. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good, you're shaking your head. Well, sorry, we're I'm here, still trying so, to process all okay. of that. Um, so that is our library. The following is happening with our recreation department right now. The fishing, der fishing derby is set for Saturday, June 1st with snacks and awards for those great catches. The car show is set for Saturday, June 15th for the DJ in a food truck. And Spark in the Park is scheduled for Friday, July 5th from 5 o'clock. Thank you. Councilman Freeman. So I really don't have much to talk about when it comes to um, our uh, Township Engineers because it's basically the same thing for the last several months. But what I do have to talk about is my daughter was involved in a motor vehicle accident on Saturday. Ooh. And I wanted to thank our PD, our fire department, and our EMS because they do this every single day and they don't get thanked for it. Well, let me tell you, I appreciate all of them for taking care of my daughter. Thank you. Thank you. Is she okay? She okay? Yeah, she's okay. <laughs> 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 I just want to make sure. Councilman, let's go. Hi, everybody. I have two items. One, I'm teaching the Memorial Day parade. So I went to Washington, D.C. over the weekend, and I did something similar when I was there like 18 months ago. I visited the Vietnam War Memorial Wall, 
This time I was able to etch the, the four names of our fallen from Spotswood. That was Gary R. Buttonbaum, Otto W. Bauman Jr., <coughs> James B. Heffron, and Dennis Crane. Um, so I thought that was pretty neat. It was very busy that day. Um, I did drive all that way in the rain down to DC just for East Brunswick to have a replica memorial wall coming into town, which many of you probably read today or mm -hmm. the weekend. Uh, it is an 80% replica of the DC wall, which is still very massive. So kudos to East Brunswick for that. And um, just the other item, we're getting into the busy season. I hope to see everybody around town. Congrats to all graduates, um, whether high school, college, or continuing their education. And I've grown to like being up here during this time of year and the warm weather. And I hope to see you all in a week or two. And, oh, just to let you know, if you want to see the wall come in, it's coming in if you haven't seen. I know um, a couple of people have shared. It's coming in Wednesday morning. Yep. Is that correct? Yeah. Up Summer Hill. Up Summer Hill. Yeah, from, from the mall, and then it's doing a route to. Uh, yep. To the, it's passing around Facebook, so take a look around. I know it's on now. I saw it today. Thank you. Councilor Mr. Woody? Uh, a lot of good things happening over at the uh, high school and all the Spotswood schools. So the next meeting will be tomorrow night for a Spotswood Board of Education over at the Media Center in the high school, 7 p.m. start. This Thursday is prom, high school uh, junior senior prom uh, will be this Thursday. Senior awards, June 6th. Graduation is June 20th, along with all the other schools for that same week. So they're having an exciting season, as you can imagine, over there. Um, Cultural Heritage will be meeting uh, again this Thursday, it's coming Thursday, over at the BFW on Daniel Road at 7 p.m. And as I always state, uh, take a look at the shop at St. Peter's, check them out for good deals, always benefiting uh, many programs and many people in need uh, throughout our communities as well. And uh, happy spring, everybody, and proud to serve. Thank you. Mayor Palmer? I had the budget presentation on. Thank you. I just want to make one uh, uh, one announcement. We uh, we were able to meet earlier today um, about the Memorial Day services and parade on Monday. Excuse me. Um, I, I believe Tim, uh, can we post the schedule on the website at some point? Uh, so the um, Memorial Day services will uh, kick off around 7:45 a.m. Uh, and go up until the parade kicks off at one o'clock. So. Um, hopefully, everybody will be able to make it out there. We're hoping for a beautiful day. Um, I think we talked about it and we planned on having a nice day. So uh, we, we hope uh, to see everybody out there. Thank you. Um, okay, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to open to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. At this time, you can come up and speak about anything that you want to speak about. I'm a police officer in a resident town. Um, I'd like to apologize for my premature. Uh, obviously, it's my first time speaking in front of everyone, so I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I've been thinking about what to say this whole time, and even though I bought myself some time, I still didn't think about what to say. <laughs> but I think there's some things that you guys need to hear on my own behalf um, on the other side of things. I was made aware of this spectacle, I guess, two days ago. It wasn't this first that I remember showing. It wasn't voted by us. I don't know if that was intended to or not, but I'm getting sick and tired of everything that's going on here. I'm tired of the billboards, I'm tired of the lawsuits, I'm tired of the news interviews, all of it. When I saw Mr. Skrivanek's name up there, I got a little annoyed. Um, I don't care what anyone says, he's not an evil guy. When a baby died in my arms, less than half the membership reached out to me to make sure that I was okay. And even fewer than that, continued to keep up with me to see if I was okay. John Skrvanek was one outside of that membership that continued to keep in touch with me to see if I was okay. And so he's a good man. Ever since the recent departure of three of our members, it's been like a breath of fresh air around here. Big time. Some of us are getting along with people that we never thought we'd get along with. And it's kind of hard to say. 
When I stepped down as PBA president, one of my executive members even mentioned how they were afraid of certain people retaliating against them. Shortly after I stepped down, that started to happen. I can't talk about the disciplinary matters that have been dished out, but it's pretty ridiculous. A lot of cops will tell you, they can't get you on the road, they'll get you inside. Your boots are untied, your uniform looks like crap, they'll get you there. So I got written up twice. The response I got from my own union was, well, you're kind of on your own, you can grieve it on your own. But if you do, you're gonna have a bigger bullseye on your back. These are some of the things that we deal with. So rather than sit and do nothing, I felt it was necessary to tell you guys what's going on. There's a lot of people that aren't speaking up. There's a lot of people that think that they just have to continue and go with the grain. Because if you don't go with the grain, you end up like me. I don't know what's gonna to happen to me in the future. I don't know what's gonna to happen to me tomorrow after this. I just really don't care anymore. I wanna come in and do my job and to serve the public to the best of my ability. I'm tired of the political agendas. I'm tired of the lawsuits. I just wanna work. The public deserves better. They deserve better than being disciplined for criticizing a $20,000 key box. $20,000 rather than using those funds to get things like ballistic helmets, which kind of just fell right under the rug. So, I don't really have much more to say. Again, I apologize for my premature coming up here, but I hope things get better. Nothing to apologize for, thank you. Good evening. My name is Raymond Hayduka. I'm the Chief of Police in South London Township. I'm also the Deputy Manager. Uh, part of my duties, I'm the Legal Aid and Arbitration Committee for the New Jersey State Chiefs. I am here uh, in that capacity, representing the State Chiefs and the Middlesex County Chiefs on behalf of Chief Corpus <clears throat> Many of my colleagues are obviously here in attendance because they're very concerned about what is going on and what has taken place with it. I've been a police officer for 36 years, and 18 years as a chief of police. And I can tell you, I have never seen a mess like this in my life. I, uh, in my, part of what else I do, I'm a police practices expert, I give expert testimony. Uh, a lot of things I do deal with is internal affairs, and uh, I'm a hearing officer. And I'm gonna get into some of that, but I wanna point some of these things out to the council to the uh, governing body right now, because only you can do something at this point. <clears throat> There's some legal facts regarding this situation. What our association clearly believes is the unlawful suspension of Chief Corpus Aero. The Middlesex County prosecutor did not undertake or handle this disciplinary investigation, or even investigate some of the charges lodged as required by law and the New Jersey Attorney General guidelines on internal affairs policies and procedures. He just disciplined. Right. Some of the things he was clear of. Uh, the prosecutor's office has already looked into and exonerated Chief Corpusero on many of the charges lodged. The suspension, it's, it's just obvious, it's political. It's retaliatory, rather than what is statutorily required by law. Straight out, the mayor and Mr. Umba have it out for Chief Corpusero. They have it out for Captain Mayo, and I really don't know much about Officer Sasso, but I suspect that's the same. <clears throat> Most of these charges were lodged in violation of the 45-day rule, which also clearly applies to this matter, right? The 45-day rule is simple. When you have enough information to charge somebody, you, know, you must do so. You can't wait, you can't punt it, you can't have uh, extended bureaucratic delays, right? I looked at the charges. They're not worth the paper they're written on. Whoever wrote that, those charges, get your money back. That's how bad they are. Every police officer in New Jersey, including the chief of police, has certain rights, all right? We're entitled to due process. We're not just subject to the discipline at the whim of a mayor or a business administrator. <clears throat> I'm gonna give you a briefing on a statute, NJSA 4814-147. You might wanna look that up. It says, and, and given in, in synopsis, Except otherwise provided by law, no permanent member or officer, this is including the chief, I answered that, 
of the police department shall be removed from his office, employment, or position for political reasons, or for any cause, regulations established by government or the police department in force, nor shall, shall such member be suspended, removed, fined, or reduced from rank in office or position there except for just cause. Right? There's a lot of legal word but I'm going to give you a very brief lesson on what it is. There's seven standards to discipline somebody. You need just cause. You can't just wake up and say, I want him out of here because I'm not getting what I want. You need a reasonable rule or order. All right, there's some rules in there that I read the charges, they're reasonable. But one, the chief was charged with the PBA putting stuff on Facebook, right? You want another, you got 13 lawsuits, you want 14? Have the chief go after some, uh, to the PBA for exercising their First Amendment right, right? That is one of, that, that might be my favorite stupidest charge that's out there. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous, it's embarrassing, and I cannot believe an attorney wrote that. Right. He needs notice. They need notice of what's going on. He had no idea. You need a sufficient investigation. There was no investigation, with the exception of the one she was clear with already. You need a fair investigation. I don't need to explain that. But anyone here who's ever being accused of anything or a crime or an administrator, you have a right as a resident, as a citizen of the United States, to respond. It's established in Supreme Court law, all right? You have that right. You have a right to respond. Chief never had it. They called him in and said, this is what you did, get out of here. No louder, no hearing. Right? He's still waiting on a hearing. <clears throat> He's supposed to have, there's supposed to be proof. There's no proof that any of this took place. Equal treatment, there needs to be an appropriate penalty. But we're not gonna get to that, obviously, yet, because we all know what's gonna happen. They're gonna hire a hatchet person, and they're gonna probably fire all three of them. So there's no legal basis for these charges. And it's obvious that it's an attempt to remove Chief of Corpusero from office so the mayor and the business administrator can exact past revenge, uh, revenge for past diplomatic actions taken against something like a family member, and they didn't agree with it, okay? And to take control of the day-to-day -day operations of the police department. I have seen approximately, I think over 60 hearings now as a hearing officer. <clears throat> If you hire a fair and objective hearing officer, he is going to dismiss them before the hearing on a motion. I've done that before. You need a hearing. You need a fair investigation. There's numerous procedural violations. Mayor Palmer and Business Mayor uh, Umba, they fail to understand and acknowledge that Chief Corbusero, like every New Jersey police chief, has two bosses. That's by statute. They can't, but they, part of that is the administration can't control the day-to-day -day operation, only the chief does. This is established since 1970. There's a law enforcement chain of command. As I said, the chief has two bosses. Law enforcement matters. The chief of police answers to the prosecutor. It's no if it's crime, um, anything to do with investigations, internal affairs. I'll get to that in a minute. Non-issues, they'll answer to the appropriate authority. Budget. Um, you know, what needs to be done in the police department to run in an orderly fashion, with the exception of non-operational issues, they can hold the chief within the budget. Those are reasonable expectations. <clears throat> uh, it's clear they're overstepping, and the root cause of these bogus charges served on Cap uh, on uh, Corpusero, Chief Corpusero, and Captain Mayo, is because they both refuse to be puppets and to do their bidding. That's, what, that's just what it is, nothing more. Chief's Responsibility Act was established by law many years ago, I believe in 1981, in order to stop this type of political interference. And I'm gonna give you a brief synopsis. The chief has the absolute right by statute to administer and enforce rules and regulations, directives, and <clears throat> discipline you know, of the force of its officers and personnel. Well, already the chief's been disciplined because he didn't discipline somebody that probably didn't need to discipline. They have the exercise and discharge function powers of the duties of the force. They prescribe duties and assignments of all subordinates of the duties in force. Well, that's part of one of the disciplines because he assigned somebody as an acting sergeant. Anybody was told, well, someone else was on the list. He had a valid reason, but he didn't get a chance to explain. Delegate his authority as he deemed necessary for the efficient operation, and he has to record at least monthly. 
The Chief Responsibility Act was enacted to grant statutory powers to police chiefs by mandating that they shall be in charge of their departments and providing for specific duties and responsibilities and to prevent interference by elected officials individually in the operation of the police force. That has happened. The statute is being violated. Now, Mayor Palmer and Business Administrator Umba are interfering with the chief's duties and need to stay out of the day-to-day -day operations of the police department. They want total control over Chief Corpusera or whoever's going to sit in that seat. <clears throat> and for obvious reasons, you need to have it stop. Uh, there are numerous incidents of the interference and I know everyone probably wants to go home eventually. I could sit up here for a very long time and discuss them with you, but I'm just gonna highlight a few of them. The business administrator was threatening to tow a vehicle from the South Lake Court that was being held as part of an investigation. Chief Corbusero called me, what do I do? I said, did you, he said, no, he just sent me a threatening email, move it. I said, this is what you do, send him an email back and tell him you'll put him in handcuffs and arrest him. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. that was, that's the obvious answer. You don't interfere with the police investigation. <clears throat> He's also demanding IA and confidential files. All right, the prosecutor had to step in. The mayor wanted a police radio or one of the police channels and access to the police department. I know the prosecutor did step in on the access to the police department. Now, the business ministry has this fixation on cameras in the police department, and I can only assume to spy on police officers. Why? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's improper, though, for many reasons. You have domestic violence victims, you have confidential informants, right? No one's saying cares about the front of the building, or but places that inside the building can't have. Now, I don't know what type of background info the governing body was privy to prior to hiring Brandon Umba, but you should know that in two previous towns, Lumberton and Manchester, he had an issue with the chief because he wanted access to the cameras. I don't know what the fixation is, but the prosecutor in Burlington and Ocean County, and I have the letters, well, I know I have one of the letters, had to step in and direct him to cease and desist. Now, history repeats itself in Spotswood because he was advised again by our prosecutor that's a really bad idea. All right? Um, so, Mr. Obama, congratulations. You're the only business administrator that I know in New Jersey that has had three prosecutors tell you to knock it off. That's impressive. I would like to see Prosecutor Cofina's letter then. Okay. I said two. I know two. I may have three, but I have the email never, for one. I never, Can I talk? With all due respect, no, my I time? You're not being respectful. I say what you want after I'm done. I've asked for the cameras inside the police department. You attributed no, to this I have it. No, I have it for the public. No, I didn't. No. Mr. President, Councilor, can I speak? Please, please keep in order. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Everything I've done. Right, so you can't have access to police cameras. I can talk all night louder than you. Trust me. Yeah, you can absolutely. Now, in closing, I want to, you know, I, I don't blame the government. I know you're in a bad spot, but the conduct of the mayor and the business mayor is impacting the police department and the borough. Everyone's losing in this situation. All right? The, the taxpayers, the police officers, everyone up here. Cost of litigation to the taxpayers and instability in the police department is taking place. I think we all know that. All right? <clears throat> you're losing good police officers. I know, I hired them. <laughs> I know it's funny, but quite frankly, I'm going to poach more of them because you got some damn good cops in this police department. Yep. Right. I'm going to hire more of them. Some of my colleagues, I highly recommend you do the same. All right, you got good police officers, but this interference and it's gone too far. Everyone needs to get in a room and resolve this. Everyone needs to put their egos in check. All right, but you know, I mean, this officer I hired, so why are you leaving? And I, I, I think I knew why. He says, my stomach hurts going to work every single day. I said, why? He said, we don't know what's coming from the top. And I said, the chief? He said, no, the politics. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to get into it, and I don't want to press the kid, but I do thank you for him. He's an amazing police officer. He's going up. He's, I definitely believe he'll be sitting in my chair one day. <clears throat> so recruitment and retention in most agencies is a problem. Uh, if you keep this dysfunction, you're going to have a problem operating a police department. Mm -hmm. You look at the city of East Orange, it's a little different environment, but there's some small departments checkered throughout the state. They, they're having a problem fielding shifts. Right? And a lot of it has to do with dysfunction. Chief Corpusero has spent 30 years dedicated to unblemished service to the residents of Spotswood. He's well respected in the county, as you can see all the chiefs here, and well respected in the state of New Jersey. 
I urge council to do this. Let's get the ball rolling. Put a resolution on the agenda supporting the return of Chief Corpusero and Captain Mayo for Osasso in full duty, along with the dismissal of these bogus charges. Mm -hmm. You have the authority to do so. The mayor and business administrators, they know that. This is why they're fighting so damn hard with taxpayer dollars to prevent you from hiring an attorney for guidance. Mm -hmm. I also urge you to pass a resolution demanding that Mayor Palmer and an administrator recuse themselves from any policy or decisions involving the police department until this litigation is adjudicated. <clears throat> you can easily appoint the council president as the appropriate authority. Uh, so all these matters are resolved. There's no conflicts. Stop the bleeding of the taxpayers' dollars and the devastation of the morale. Take action tonight. Um, I do suggest you budget more funds. And it looked like a nice budget. That thing's going up next year. Uh, you know, I, I, and I'm not saying this in jest or being funny. Everyone has their opinion with hiring these grant writers. In South Brunswick, we, we write our own grants. I got a brilliant idea. Instead of having a half a million dollars in salary, sit home with, hey, bring them in to write grants. They're not that hard. You know, write the grant, you fill out the application. If you have a technical question, they usually have help. It's not that hard. They're not that hard to find. It's the internet. So that, I'm closing out. I want to thank you tonight for giving me the opportunity. And I urge you to take action and please do so swiftly. Bring these police officers back to work. Let them do their job. And let's come up with some kind of resolution where everyone gets in a room, checks their egos, and put these matters to bed. Nobody's getting rich. Anyone I've ever talked to that's been involved with this litigation, even ones that got over a million dollars, will tell you it's not worth it. It's not worth the toll it takes on you, your coworkers, and your family. Let's resolve this and let's move on. Thank you. Unfortunately, the addition of B.A. Umba to the Palmer administration brought a whole new level of nefarious behavior. B.A. Umba used his influence as the then state assemblyman to seek protections at the expense of the department. Specifically, B.A. Umba claimed a borough resident had scared him at a borough council meeting when she said he was a predictable douchebag. <laughs> that would be me. <coughs> you are a predictable douchebag. <laughs> B.A. Umba then contacted the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office and reported that he was in fear for his safety as a state assemblyman, which in turn sparked a call to the New Jersey State Police, who then showed up at my house on October 13th. Because apparently if you use the word predictable douchebag, that's some kind of threat to physical bodily harm. He then called the New Jersey State Police Executive Protection Unit for their investigation and enforcement action. However, B.A. Umba went on to state to the other law enforcement agencies that, quote, he could not trust the cross of the police department, end quote, in order to gain their assistance. Such disloyal offensive and derogatory statements made by the borough's own B.A. caused claimant great professional embarrassment and were widespread enough to be reported back to the claimant. B.A. Umba thus vilified and defamed claimant and the department to law enforcement agencies they deal with on a regular basis, including the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office and the New Jersey State Police. A few days later, B.A. Umba then became the complainant on an IA matter against claimant and two other officers being targeted, likely with the advice and assistance of Mayor Palmer, as per their usual modus operandi of using the IA process as a shield and a sword. My husband got called into the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office on an IA that was filed against Mayo and Corbusera. Because apparently we are in cahoots and there's a conspiracy theory. 
Um, Uga complained that all the target officers were engaged in the dissemination of confidential information solely because he viewed CCTV footage and watched the borough resident he fears enter the department. Again, without any actual proof or reliable information, B.A. Umba immediately defamed claimant and baselessly impu imputed serious misconduct to him. B.A. Umba contacted the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office with his devised and imaginary conspiracy theory because he is aware that all such complaints need to be investigated per the IAPP. Clearly, B.A. Umba is now following the Palmer administration playbook and continues to subject claimant and certain of his staff members who are at the top tier targets of Mayor Palmer to retaliatory adverse action. You are a predictable douchebag. You are also a pompous ass. You should be ashamed of yourself. Your husband screwed up and now you're trying to go after the police department for it. We all know it. Just resign, Jackie. Call it a day and take your idiots with you. Because we're all done. We're all fed up. This is costing us millions of dollars. Have you done your job yet, Brandon? You figured out the retirement crap? Oh, that's right. You've only been here a year. You haven't done that yet. Just as for record purposes here, his brother's also a state trooper. How ironic. <laughs> Make sure the state police come to my house again. 118 Min Alfred Road. I'll make a motion to close the public portion. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.